Hello and welcome to Army of Crime, your favorite comic book related podcast. My name is Matt. I am your host slash humble guide, and I'm here with my co-host slash humbler guide, Dustin. Dustin, say something to the people. Something. All right. And this episode, we are looking at a graphic novel uh, called Pyongyang, which is about North Korea. Pyongyang being the capital of North Korea, written by, written and drawn by French cartoonist Guy Delisle, put out back in the way before time of 2005 about his like experience in North Korea as a like an, working for an animation studio. And the reason I picked this is I had not read it before, before I chose it as a topic. But I had seen it referenced as one of the few, because like this this uh, travel log, like travel journal cartoonist thing, I mean, it's kind of a, a subgenre of its own, right? That's like a thing. Sure, yeah. The indie comic travel log kind of thing. But, you know, North Korea, not everyone goes to North Korea. So I thought that would be interesting. That's really kind of what made me drawn to it was not really the author so much just the fact that it was about North Korea I thought it I thought it had some potential to be interesting so that's kind of why I picked it and then I made you read it had you heard of this before either I assume you've heard of North Korea I'm not yeah. that familiar with uh, Guy Delisle I believe he is French Canadian not French okay yes I think they mentioned that in there French Canadian yeah working for a French animation studio in the in the graphic novel. Yes, because um, like animation in the West is basically all farmed out to Asian countries. And for whatever reason, there are some French animation companies that are farming out their animation work to North Korea of all places. So he he goes there to basically oversee this operation. And thus we have a uh, comic book sort of travel log, like you mentioned about his time in North Korea. Yeah. So you had wanted to to read this comic book, Matt. What did you think of it? Well, I liked it. I thought it was interesting. You know, he, he, it's an interesting, right, his perspective. So he's working for this animation studio. And the the whole thing, I mean, the reason, the draw here, the draw is the fact that there's like a guy who's just kind of like peeking around North Korea, right? That's the draw. I think, at least for me, uh, because North Korea is such a famously closed off society that like no one gets to really kind of, uh, you know, joyride around. You you can visit if you really, really want to, but you only see these very certain parts. And he because he actually works there for like a North Korean animation studio, he in that kind of position probably spends a lot more time, you know, than most people like literally on Earth would would have the chance uh, in North Korea. So, I, I mean, I thought that was interesting, the little glimpses of culture um, and trying to like, you're almost like playing detective, trying to like always read between the lines because everything that they show you is so like curated, right? Because you have, he has to travel everywhere with these guides, um, the foreign workers slash diplomats slash whoever, all the foreign people stay like literally on a little island in the, in the city. So like, even if you were to sneak out, you would not be able to go anywhere. Yes, they they in in North Korea they have apparently three separate hotels that are just for foreigners and they're like yes on a little island in Pyongyang and and so that the vast majority of the country is hidden away from the eyes of the foreigners and they're given this very strict curated experience. Um, yeah. But so, you know, this is not like an article in a newspaper it's a comic right. book so what did you think of it as a comic book well i i did i felt like i could have wanted more i mean i don't know if it if it gives you a lot um i have read like not some non-fiction books about north korea because i find it interesting so i don't know if there's any big revelations for me as far as the information um so overall i mean as as a comic book as a hundred and you know 80 some pages i wouldn't say i was blown away by it but the, the interesting part is just the, kind of the the little journey inside inside North Korea. And like I said, I have read other books and stuff on North Korea, so I wasn't like going in not knowing anything about the country. 
Sure. Yeah. I do think his art style is kind of fun because he has this very like to draw the the people and like to draw himself. It's like a very cartoony style. Uh, but he does give you some big splash pages of like the architecture and like the kind of detailed like buildings. Like when he goes to visit some of the monuments and that kind of thing. Yes, and like there's a, he has a good page showing the uh, these girls that are performing this song and they're like really strained uh, smiles that they're desperately keeping for, you know, throughout this entire performance. Um, yeah, I mean, I thought that, that this comic book was fine. Like, you know, to be, if you want to learn about North Korea, like, you're probably better off just like reading a book. Yeah. As a travel log, you know, experience, this is uh, fine. It's intermittently entertaining. I mean, Guy, uh, he has a, he's kind of a funny, you know, has a funny voice and a experience, unique like look on things. And I, I found the sort of details of how these uh, companies kind of circuitously do business in North Korea. Um, sort of interesting, but I mean, yeah, this I don't think this is like a great comic book. It's fine. Yeah. It's kind of yeah, it's, I think it's hard. It's when you're setting yourself up to do like a travel log about North Korea. It's kind of a hard. It's like an impossible climb because by definition, it's going to be anticlimactic because you can't really do much there. So it's like obviously he doesn't he doesn't really do anything exciting while he's there. It's not like you can you know run into people on the street and like have adventures or something. I mean it's such a controlled experience that I think by definition yeah there's there's probably not much exciting that he would get up to. One thing um that I actually didn't didn't super love was I feel like he is kind of almost too like self aware about it. What and, do you mean? Well, like he brings like a copy of 1984 with to read and he like borrows it to a guy. I mean, if that's really what he did, then that's what he did. But uh, as, as as a narrator, I mean, you know, obviously it's meant to be like autobiographical, but there's some, you know, you're, you're, you have to like, I think any autobiographical, you know, something like this, there's there's some degree of you have to find the, the, the truth in there. You know, it ends up being lightly, it's going to end up being lightly fictionalized in some way even just by what things you choose to include or not include. Uh, and sometimes I found it like a little too on the nose if we're, if we're being honest. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a very light kind of quick read sort of thing. That's, I was um, surprised that you had wanted to talk about this because it does compared to a lot of the stuff that we have done episodes on. It doesn't, really seem to have quite as much to dig into. I mean, the stuff about North Korea is definitely inter interesting. But yeah. as you said, you know, anybody who visits North Korea is necessarily going to have a very, like, tunnel visioned, you know, look. And there are some moments in there where he, like, there's a train station that they won't let him go to. So he, like, sneaks away and looks at the train station and it's just like a normal train station. Yeah, um, which I thought was kind of interesting, but you know, you drive the like the highways are all empty and everything's like immaculately clean. Like they're really obsessed with like this image of cleanliness. Right, the and, volunteers that are like always cleaning everything and cleaning the sidewalks and like hand picking the weeds out of things. Yeah, for whatever reason they've decided that this is an impressive thing that they have to keep up on is making everything as clean as possible. It was interesting because one of the one of his guides actually mentions that he visited France once and he didn't like it because it was dirty um, and that they were like beggars everywhere, which are obviously two things that the government of North Korea simply would not allow to exist. Right. And bringing in some of my knowledge from like other stuff that I've read about it. Yeah. The, the, the capital, the Pyongyang, where the foreigners would really the only foreigners um, that would leave that would might be like the aid workers, which he kind of mentions a little in here. But for the most part, foreigners are just staying in the capital and they really do make um, a, a concerted effort. It's interesting um, to make the capital look as like as great as possible, which is interesting, right? Because for such a, it's a weird set of paradoxes. 
uh, that for this hyper nationalistic country, they're so intent on impressing whatever foreigners show up. And like for this super, you know, it's like a command economy. Um, it's like the Stalinist command economy where they explicitly are against consumerism. And yet they operate like stores for foreigners to go to. So it's like yeah. a weird set of a weird set of paradoxes. Well, and, and the, it, it the is central, interesting. The central guiding philosophy of North Korea is Jewish, which is like even more so than you know communism or anything like that. They've invented this own political social philosophy that's based on like Korean nationalism and self reliance. But then in the same regard, they after the fall of the Soviet Union, they are not able to actually self-reliance is like an impossibility. So instead, so they have to like court um, foreign investment and foreign companies and foreign workers in every possible way. So yeah, it's a extremely like self-contradictory experience as really I suppose many countries are in all kinds of ways, but yeah, it's um, continually. And of course it's like, they're constantly putting up all these facades and doing all these things to impress people that are so obviously phony. Like, you know, the, the cleanliness thing is like not really impressive because you know that they have an army of workers out there cleaning it at all times because they care what it looks like to, to a crazy degree. So it's like, you're not really impressing anyone. Like we all get it. You know what I mean? Like, and they all go to these, um, you know, like a museum of gifts that people have given um, the Kim Jong Il or Kim. What's what's the, the main guy? Uh, guy. The first or guy. The Kim first Il leader. Sung. Yeah, that guy. Kim Il Sung is the founder of of uh, the state, who is essentially like a Soviet, a hand picked by the Soviets. Yeah. Uh, guy. Yeah, and then um, Kim Jong Il was his son who was the leader i mean it's like a monarchy essentially which yeah. is one of the other paradoxes is, is it's a, a communist country that or claims to be this communist country that's essentially a monarchy but yeah um you know the, the, the most interesting thing that i found in this about north korea that i didn't know about was that um kim song il uh had a huge tumor on the back of his head that he uh that they would like edit out of photographs and people like weren't allowed to like photograph him from a certain side to like try and hide it. And it was like illegal to like talk about it. It's uh, an especially like Orwellian level of denying reality. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the weird. It's it's like the question you have to ask yourself. And he, he does bring this up in the book. Like, do the people here, like do, how much of it do they buy? And, and, you know, they, they have to buy it. They have to at least act like they're buying it. And then, but like you said, uh, they're bringing foreigners to see the, you know, the, the museum of all the presents that world leaders send to Kim Il-sung or whatever. Like, like, do they realize that like every foreigner like sees through that? Right. That, that no one is actually like buying this, all th these ridiculous cons that they set up to like. But they put so much effort into it. It's right. like they they must think that people are impressed by that. Like no no one would really be impressed by that, right? It, it's yeah, it's odd. It's just very odd. Um, yeah, it's weird because they like they're, one of the ideas that North Korea puts forth is that like you know the the Kim family and like Jewish are like widely admired and like studied around the world. Right. Which anyone who actually is from around the world obviously knows that that's not true, but they still will like repeat it or like try to be like, here's all these newspaper articles about how awesome North Korea is. And it's like very obviously fake. Like you can understand why they would present that to people within the country who have no way of knowing any better. But like there's no way that you can convince, you know, someone from Canada that North Korea is like, you know still a widely admired and studied like country in the world when it's like obviously not true but like do they know that the the sky is not going to buy that or do they just you know whether they know it or not it's like they just have to do it anyway
they have to do it anyway. And the the person who invented it slash giving out the orders maybe does buy it because they're the guy at the top uh, who doesn't have to really answer questions about. And I don't know. It's yeah, it's interesting. It's a, it's um, it's it's more of a closed off, like a closed ecosystem of a society than than probably anywhere else on Earth. Uh, so it, it yeah, it's interesting. Um, one of the the book that I read, like I was thinking about these volunteers because he doesn't really explain the volunteers in here, and the, the book that I read about this is called um, Nothing to Envy which is just a collection of interviews with people who left North Korea and which actually is referenced in here because the, 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 the um, nothing to envy is a line from a children's song that they sing in here. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, I do not. Yeah, where the song goes. So he, he listens to them sing it in the, in the graphic novel. But the line is like um, something about how the children of North Korea have nothing to envy in the world, right? Because they have it better than everyone else. Right. Um, and they talk about how like you have to, you know, you have the mandatory... Uh, Job, your job is mandatory. You have to go. You can't quit your job or go do something else. Uh, and, you know, the volunteer is you're required to report to your local guy who's going to give you a volunteer job. So you have to spend like a one day each week volunteering. And then you have like mandatory um, like political classes, like after work and on weekends. So you really have like no free time. You're either working at your job or you're doing the volunteer work or you're going to like political classes. So it's. I mean, it, it's like a grim, it's grim, I guess would be a word to put it. It's a grim existence. And then it's just weird to have these foreigners come stay at the hotel and get like wined and dined. And they give like the foreigners like the best treatment that they can muster. Yeah. Well, like the average person in their country has a uh, a fairly low standard of living compared to, you know, those foreigners who then go back to their own country. Well, yeah, because I believe, and I don't know if this is still the case, but like the... Uh... There's a uh, scarcity of food to eat in North Korea, um, right? Like there are people starving like all over the place. I believe and... it is better now. I, I, it's better now. Um, they went through uh, under um, like probably more when right like I think it was like the 90s and the early aughts. I'd have to look it up. But the 90s, early aughts under um, right right after Kim. Well, basically right when the Soviet Union fell and, and all, a lot of those support networks from the other like um, – Warsaw Pact bloc countries fell apart. Yeah, and they went through a horrific famine. I it, I believe it is better now. Okay. Uh, but yes, uh, horrible like food problems and famine. Um, you know, exacerbated by how closed of a society it is, and that the and they do mention this in the graphic novel how the foreign aid was often just like whole handedly taken by the the military and then just sold on the black market. Right. Like like all authoritarian regimes, uh, always super crooked. You know, it's never right. the, the, the idea they put forward is always like we're just following the law because we like it nice and orderly. But it's always like super crooked. Yeah. So um, do you have anything else to uh, add about this uh, comic book itself? Or is this uh, just some general uh, North Korea talk? Yeah, I don't know. I, th I thought it was an okay comic. I'd recommend it. It's almost something you could use, um, like, educationally as, like, an introduction because it is so sh uh, it's kind of brief, you know, and there is some kind of interesting tidbits in there. Uh, but as as someone who already kind of had a, um, I, I wouldn't say, like, a deep understanding, but, like, a you know, a cursory knowledge of North Korea, I wouldn't say it really, you know, blew my mind or anything. Yeah. I, I'm, I've seen he has um, he has a lot of these about different parts of the world that he's been. And, you know, it would be I would be interested. Uh, I would be curious to read one where he goes to maybe a country that lets you kind of get up to more. That isn't quite such a curated experience. Yeah. Because like, uh, like, I, like I mentioned, there's a, there's a Jerusalem one, which would be interesting to go with our. As a companion piece, perhaps to our episode about. Uh, Joe Sacco's Palestine, if you recall that book. Right, right. And that was a very good one. Yeah, it's kind of an impossible thing, I think, like the, like I said, the travel log of North Korea, because they don't let you do all that much. So and by I mean, definition, he, he's kind of has sort of a funny eye on it to begin with. So you're not going to really get like a, you know, like you're not, to compare you're not this to something. Of like a, 
here's a random person and they're going to experience it with fresh eyes and like discover it. Like, you know what you're getting into when you're, when you're going to North Korea to do something. Hopefully. Yeah. So I have uh, two other, well, you mentioned a book and I was thinking of two like sort of documentaries kind of that I've seen of North Korea that I thought of while reading this. One, I can't remember what it's called. I'll have to see if I can find it. But it was a, a Vice segment for like the Vice. Thing. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, like I think it's just called the Vice Guide to North Korea, where they they kind of hit up a lot of the same things, uh, which I suppose well, is what every. The thing I was talking about was thinking of was one where they were in Russia and North Korea basically rent rents out its people as like workers in foreign countries. Oh, no, so, I do not. I'm not familiar with that. Yeah, so this is a different thing. This is, there's like a, these like uh, logging crews basically in Siberia that are North Korean workers, and they, so like I think a Russian company basically subcontracts with the North Korean government for these people to go work inside another country, but then the North Korean government, I think, like collects like all their wages, basically. So these guys, the the crew, like the, the journalists that are reporting this are trying to like get basically access to like see if they can talk to these people and see what the deal is with this arrangement. But it's like very like closely guarded off and you're like not allowed to to like see these people. They're like secluded. Um, and apparently this is a thing that North Korea does is rent out, basically rent out its citizens to other countries as like a labor force for for money. Um, yeah, which is so such the, a weird paradox for a hyper nationalistic command economy that's against consumerism to like turn your own citizens into products and sell them to other countries. Yeah, right. That basically like rents out its own people as like a slave labor force. Um, in, and this was in Russia, but which was obviously easier then because it's uh, a close. I think one of the only is it, there's two countries that I think actually or three, I guess, that have a land border with North Korea, China, Russia and South Korea. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was interesting. And there was also uh, speaking of Russia, it was a Russian documentary I saw called um, Under the Sun. Which was really interesting because North Korea invited this Russian filmmaker to come to their country and shoot like basically a propaganda film. But the, uh, the the rub here, I guess, is that he left the camera running like before and after they would shoot these extremely like staged sequences. And then he took the footage out of the country and like finished editing it in Russia and released it. So in the film, it's supposed to be about this girl who's like honored to be in this like special pageant where she gets to sing for the country or whatever. But in the film, so before each like take that they would do for this documentary, you can see the government like minders coming in and telling everyone what to say and like perfectly arranging the scene of what's supposed to be like a real thing. And like this family where this girl lives is like fake and it's like they're not even really related and so it's like all like very scripted and like managed and you can see all of that taking place on camera simply because the filmmaker just like left the camera rolling and then edited the footage himself and just like left all of that like really interesting stuff in there which i mean it's not like a fascinating like i would say like an extremely interesting like great documentary but it's um I found it to be like that aspect of it is kind of interesting where you can see them attempting to, you know, create a very like a, a propaganda piece, but they were basically foiled by the fact that the director had all the footage and just cut it himself out of the country. So Again, anyway, like, those are two North Korea related things that I was going to mention. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting subject. Um, North Korea. I mean, it's a tragedy. All the people, all the all, all the human suffering. Um, but a, a fascinating, you know, a lot a lot of angles on that one. I think they also run. Don't they also run like hacking farms and a, like drug smuggling, far, like all kinds of weird things, because they basically have no concern for international law. 
Yeah, I, I do believe they do a lot of like black market kind of operations and manufacturing of like designer drugs that they sell and stuff like that. Um, what well, well, would have been really interesting, and I'm I'm sure we can kind of imagine it, but the, there's a part where they drive by the like secret walled off community, which obviously he he doesn't get to. Probably no Westerner or non North Korean, I should say, go, gets to go inside, which is like this the the walled off area where like the party elite live. Oh yeah, right. And I, I'm I'm sure they have the the nicest of everything, and they're they're living the high life. I I, w- I would have absolutely no doubt. Right, because I think he sees like a Mercedes Benz or something like, yeah, like pulling into this like l- like a gated community, yeah, with like armed guards around it, which where all of like the party hotshots live. Yeah, and no doubt they have all of like the modern amenities. Yeah, um, right. I'm sure they have. Yeah, because like normally too, they have the TV stations and the radios, uh, where you're not supposed to change the channel or whatever, and they um, don't have the internet. Right. But I, I'm sure they have all that. I would right. no sur- no surprise if they had all that uh, for like the big the big wigs. Right. Well, Matt, is there anything else that you would like to say about uh, to throw out there about Guy Delisle's Pyongyang? I think that it covers it. I mean, it's an interesting little read. It's a short. It's a short little guy. It's an enjoyable little read. It's a fascinating subject. It's an all right comic book. I guess that's our episode on Pyongyang. Um, yeah, what, what's the appetite to learn more about North Korea? But but in, an interesting little read. You can check out our website, armyofcrime.com, is the address. My name is Matt. Um, my Twitter handle is at Army of Crime. His name is Dustin. His Twitter handle is at Dustin four 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 Dustin four 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 four. That's correct. Yes. Uh, feel free to rate and review, um, you know, throw some stars on there or whatever. Five stars for the for the dear leader. In the meantime, kids, remember, long live glorious leader Kim Il-sung. Who is still the president, despite not being alive. That's how that's how cool he is.